Welcome to Zcast, everyone. I'm Zias Caraval from ZK Research, and I'm here at Seahawks House in Berlin. I'm with Julie Souza, Global Head of Sports for AWS. Uh, we're here for the NFL game this week. It's uh, uh, actually the Colts and Falcons, or ironically, we're at Seahawks House, yeah. uh, for which you're an AWS uh, partner. How are you doing? Great. Glad to be here. It's yeah. exciting. Now, uh, NFL AWS had a partnership for a long time. Yes. Um, why don't we start just with an, with an update on uh, how things have been going with the NFL. Uh, you've been, uh, a few years, you've been running a lot of analytics for them. Yeah. I'm curious, just what have you learned over the last few years? So what's exciting about the work that we're doing at the NFL is it spans a lot of different parts of the NFL. So you alluded to sort of the fan engagement, the next-gen stats. Yeah. To start, to and if we watch, anyone who watches the NFL on Prime yes. can see the impact it's had, but you're doing a lot more work behind the scenes. Yes, right? yeah. and I really, I particularly love a lot of the player health and safety work that we've done with the league. Um, and so it's taking a lot of that same data that goes into next-gen stats, but analyzing it and adding it with, you know, computer vision technology to understand, you know, what plays are causing more injuries than others. How do we get in front of detecting, you know, injuries before they're sustained? Um, the first year that the league rolled out their digital athlete player health and safety portal, there were 700 fewer missed games by athletes. Wow, so, that's a big, yeah. yeah you think of the really dollars bad. of that, right? It's big. 100%. I mean, yeah. players, you know, want to be out on the field. The owners certainly want those players on the field. And the fans want their favorite players yeah. on the field. So this is really a win, win, win. Um, and there's a lot of interesting insights along the way, too. Figuring out which plays are more injurious and then changing the rules to maybe disallow those plays, which we yeah. saw with the hip drop tackle last season. Yeah, and so give a couple of examples of those. When you're yeah. prepping for this, you walk me through them. But you, they've actually been able to run simulations on plays yeah. and understand which plays are more dangerous. And yeah. so can you just give a couple of examples of things, the data that you saw and the rule changes that were made because of that? Yeah. Well, I think the, the one that everybody's seen is the change to the kickoff rule, right? So prior to this change, we found that there weren't that many kickoffs being returned. So not that exciting yeah. to play, right? And that also also caused 2x the injury rate and 4x the concussion rate over a normal pass or run play. Yeah. So nobody ran back kickoffs, but when you did, you got hurt. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so not the best combination. Yeah. <laughs> so they took 10,000 seasons worth of data and simulated changes to the rules to optimize for those two things. Lower injury rate, higher returns. Um, and with the, the rule um, introduced next last year, we saw the injury rate come down in line with a normal pass and run play. And as of week nine in this season, 79% 79 more, 79 more kickoff returns. So okay. it's a more exciting play now and yeah. a much safer play So now. you're getting net more plays and net fewer injuries, yes. which is actually pretty remarkable when you think Amazing. about it. Amazing. And they were also yeah. coming off last season's lowest concussion rate in history. Um, or in history on, in yeah. the NFL. So um, you're starting to see those, like I just mentioned, the hip drop tackle, they knew by looking at the data that that play caused 20X injury rate, 20X. And so they're like, you know what, we're just banning this play, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah. Um, even equipment changes, right? So we were talking about like a quarterback is gonna absorb a hit very differently than a wide receiver. So having a different position specific helmet to make you know players safer. Lots and lots of different changes in training, in um, rules and equipment that are making the game safer. Yeah, it seems really the partnership with the NFL, what AWS has brought, I think are um, a few really big innovations that were just you didn't have before. One is the ability to stream the game so you can insert things into it. Yeah. Uh, cloud production, because you're not rolling trucks around. And then all the cloud analytics. And yeah. so as you mentioned, being able to run those simulations, uh, I think from a rules perspective, they want to change the rule. They'd run it in a handful of preseason games that have to make a decision. Right. So that's you're, not enough data, yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah you, exactly. You, no, no. I think the whole point of the cloud in this is that it's making them more nimble, more flexible, and being able to do things at scale that would have been either cost prohibitive or just logistically prohibitive from them being able to do in the past. Yeah. Now, like I said, we are here at in Berlin, and I know the internationalization of the game. Uh, has been a big initiative for really all the sports league. Yes. Uh, NFL's probably taken it to the nth degree with yeah. all the places they're playing games now. Um, and uh, you've actually helped them try and, uh, we'll just talk about how you're helping them do that without having to, uh, you know, you think about all the infrastructure they need here. Yeah. Uh, how are you working with them on that? Well, I think that's a real challenge for the league too. As they go global, it's like you know, you're picking up and taking that whole implementation with you. Which you know, think about the stadiums back in the U.S., where you know they're all equipped and wired and all of those sorts of things. But as you go international, and the league certainly is looking at globalization as a part of their growth strategy. How do we make that sort of a lighter lift? Yeah. Um, so moving work streams to the cloud, whether it's from a production standpoint or 
from a data tracking standpoint, making that all accessible. And then on the flip side of that, yes, that helps in globalization, but it also helps you create different versions of a broadcast, right? So if you're up in the cloud, you don't have to roll a separate truck for each yeah. kind of broadcast. You could do a data cast. You could do a 101 version of the NFL for new fans, right? Breaking the game down in a much simpler, accessible way. Um, and that's all, you know, that's all enabled by having cloud production technology and deployed. Yeah, so if you're, the local broadcast here in Germany would be a lot more, I guess, introductory in a way than what you're going to see. Prime broadcast. Vision, which yeah, is yeah. like the data cast yeah. back on <laughs> yeah, Thursday yeah, yeah. football, yeah. Now, because uh, you, you do a lot of sports, right? Uh, and have you, and a few of them that you do, like PGA Tour, F1, yeah. do have that problem. They pick up and move every yeah. week. Right, and so have you been able to take some lessons learned there and be able to bring them to the NFL? 100%, I mean, that's the great yeah. part is that you're learning all the time and you know deploying those learnings at scale across all of your partnerships. But yeah, PGA Tour is doing a lot in that space with, um, they just have a, and you you actually toured it yeah. and did a great segment on it, um, their new production facility, which they like to say, the great thing about this, there's no servers in the building, right? Yeah. That whole production facility was built so that they could produce in the cloud, which is really exciting. Um, Formula One, they're doing a lot of the same simulation you know, work instead yeah. of creating test cars and simulating on real, very expensive cars. They're able to do a lot of that you know, simulation in the cloud to help them redesign the car and you know come up with race tactics if you're a team. So a lot of the same tools that the NFL uses are used by you know not just our sports customers, but yeah. all of our customers. Yeah, well, and actually it's a good lesson for the average, you know, the, uh, the CIO of banks or retailers, the ability to simulate AI now in the cloud yeah. is truly game changing yeah. because if, even if you want to know how I should lay out a retail store, yeah. how would you, you'd have to lay out the retail store, let people come in and then re-optimize. Yeah, get their traffic numbers yeah. I and mean, yeah. give you those, whereas you can simulate all of those different changes, manufacturing, yeah. all the, you name it, but you're right, it's that opportunity to you know simulate the data at scale without having to incur, incur the cost and the, you know, the time that was spent doing it in a much more manual way. I'm not actually sure how you would do it without that. I mean, yeah. Boeing and companies did it that way, but they uh, obviously the lift for them was pretty heavy. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, all right, what's next for you in the NFL? Um, continuing that work in player health and safety to make the game safer yeah. for sure. There's always new next gen stats launching. We're looking at things in the um, officiating space. How do we use AI to help and, and technology to help be a little bit more definitive? Like. What's that first down marker? Can we get that down and you know, and you know, within an inch? Um, so a lot of exciting things on it's uh, on the on the roadmap with them. All right, and you had some new things come up this year. So uh, NBA is new. Uh, I I wrote about that preseason. Yeah. Right, but now we're a good dozen so games into the season. Anything you picked up from that? What have you learned so far? Yeah, that's exciting too. So we're working the NBA and the W and the G yeah. League and all well, of their all properties. Well, all the NBA properties. Yeah. All the NBA properties around the world globally, which is exciting. Um, so again, they also have an international you know, mandate. So a lot of the work that we've done with the NBA and with NFL certainly is transferable in terms of the globalization efforts of the NBA. Um, you know, they're launching their stat, their version of Next Gen Stats, which is inside the game. And so those three of those analytics have launched um, and you'll start to see those woven into the broadcast in uh, late November, so to speak. But really interested in introducing parity there too for the W. And so it's not just, you know, the guys getting their analytics, yeah. but the women too. Um, and then, you know, other fan engagement tools, you know, things that, you know, help you go back in history and look at different plays and understand those better. And um, so what's exciting right now is that we're in that those talks of like, what's next? What's, you know, what, what sort of do we want to invent together? Um, and, you know, it's a super innovative league. Yeah, I think actually the ability for the, you might even have a bigger impact on the WNBA. If you can create different ways to engage fans, drive viewership up, drive revenues yeah. up, drive player salaries up. And I know that's always a big issue yeah. within women's sports and men's sports. But, well, even if you yeah. look at some of the things, like obviously they're in a difficult time right now with their collective bargaining agreement, so we're not gonna comment on that. But if you look at some of the, the you know, officiating as a priority, player health and safety as a priority, I feel like that's something where AWS can come, you know, bring our expertise yeah. to bear to help them with that. If you look at player health and safety, and obviously a lot of the work we've done here with NFL, a lot of the work in the field to date has been done on male athletes, right? And yeah. so 
all right, can we look at this a slightly different way? Can we look at player health and safety use cases for the female athlete? And advance player health and safety yeah. and, and longevity, not only for WNBA players, but for any female athlete. That's an exciting thing to contemplate. Yeah, because they are different. I remember when NASCAR went through that with Danica Patrick and yeah. some of the female drivers, they, the cars were designed for men yeah. for safety. Well, and even so, yeah. just yeah. cars in general are actually designed, like all the crash test, test yes. dummies are men, right? Yeah. So yeah. why do women get disproportionately like injured in car dummies. accidents? Yeah. 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 <laughs> you said it, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, now, uh, I wanted to ask you, since we're in Germany, about uh, Bundesliga. Now, oh, yeah. that actually, when I look at the data they produce and the stuff and the engagement they've had with fans, that might be your most successful partnership, right? Just from an impact of the game. I love this because they actually, when they launched Match Facts, which is their version of Next Gen Stats, yeah. they surveyed like their international fan base. These are diehards, right? They introduced those analytics and 90% of the respondents said that it improved their game viewing experience and 97% said that they actually learned something more, additional. And these are already And these are hardcore fans, yes. yeah, yeah. Right, so it's like, it shows you that if you present the data in a way that's like interesting and accessible and aids the storytelling, people want to consume that, right? And they're also, DFL is really pushing the edges of like generative AI and how they can deploy it to just sort of grow their impact. We were talking about this before, and they are producing like, you know, long form stories and things like that. And then they're using Gen AI to create derivative versions. Like, all right, let's take this story, whether it's a game recap or an upcoming, you know, ex, you know article on something, and let's create a Snapchat version, a Instagram Reels version, a... Um, <laughs> they're showing <laughs> us. They're very excited about the DFL. Um, so they're, just, they're using all of these technologies in there. And that's, I think, what we look for, too, when we partner with, with um, yeah. properties, is like, who's got that, like, innate curiosity and that spirit of innovation? Um, I mean, we were just on a call with one of our sports partners the other day, and I, and I asked the question, I was like, I want your hard problem. Like, what is it you're trying to solve for, right? And then let's figure out how we can maybe use technology to solve that problem. And so TFL's been, you know, at the, you know, they yeah. come at us with all their hard problems, which I love. Yeah, and I wanted to actually ask you about the impact, because a lot of the AI that you've done has been analytics, right? Yeah. I remember talking to Swim Australia, it changes how they coach, yep. things like that. We are entering the generative AI era, where it allows for more personalization. What kind of impact do you think Gen AI is going to have on sports? I think that's going to help a lot. Well, in the personalization yeah. for sure, and just in that regional or globalization too, because you're seeing things like we were talking a little bit earlier about the PGA Tour as an example. 15% of the shots in a tournament are actually televised. That's leaving 85% of the shots on the table, right? And so, and, with, and when they're not televised, there's no voiceover, there's no commentary, there's no context. So the PGA Tour, as an example, is using that scoring data and their entire historical archive and you know the scoring system and everything, and they're creating contextual text commentary within their Tourcast app so that fans can actually follow their favorite golfer and have context for what's happening versus just silence, right? Yeah. And so I think what that some of the generative AI tooling is allowing content to be maximized and distributed in a more localized and personalized way. Um, and I'll give you an example, DFL actually did something really fun where they took, again, their scoring data, they created text commentary, but they did it in multiple languages and then multiple personas within those languages. So, and I'll give you an example. One of them was just like a straight broadcaster view. One was like a really Twitter X style quippy feed. And then they had one they called bro. And it was just, you know. The bro feed. A bro feed. Yeah. Talking as you expect yeah. a bro yeah. might, yeah. right? Like with their friends in a more casual tone of commentating the game. So it's sort of letting fans meet, let the properties meet fans where they are and bring new fans in. So do you envision a day where as a fan, I'll be able to watch any sport, follow any players, and, and really digest it any way that I want to. That is my hope and dream. Yeah. I mean, I really do think that in that, and we were talking about this earlier too, we had this sort of somewhat like this barrier of like a linear distribution model where you had a one-to-many stream and you had to produce the least offensive broadcast for as many people as possible. Now with streaming, people can sort of choose their own adventure. So if you want to follow a particular player, if you want it in a certain language, if you want your fantasy stats updated in real time, if yeah. you want to be prompted to order Uber Eats 20 minutes before halftime, if you want to place a real money bet, all of those sort of engaging second screen experiences 
can be built into the primary streaming experience in a really personalized, really um, interactive way. And I think that's the future. Yeah, well, sports betting and fantasy sports have had a huge impact on engagement. Yeah. Now we just need the content to be able to follow what it is we're trying to engage with. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. And last sport, uh, let's talk a little PGA Tour. I think the, the, the advancements in AI that I saw in the PGA Tour app this year were off the charts. The amount of innovation from you yeah. know, hot streak and every shot yeah. was uh, was incredible. And they and don't so, slow down. Yeah. I mean, I'm, more to come. Yeah. They've got a really exciting one in the works right now. And it's just, um, that's what I love about the tours. They, they are relentless in their pace of innovation. Um, yeah. So they, they're, they're really good stuff. And, and a lot of it really aimed at the fan. But they also have tooling that's making it better for the golfers too, yeah. right? So generative AI tools that are helping the golfers like, you know, approach uh, a tournament logistically as well as from a, you know, um, a golfing perspective. Well, that's something, um, again, would translate across leagues. If you're a batter in a hitting slump, if you're uh, a kicker who's missing field goals, if you're a golfer who's got the yips, yeah. to be able to look at when you're successful and when you're not successful and use analytics to be able to tell you why that is, it might just be, you know, your yeah. kicking motions off a little bit right. or something like that. It's uh, a great thing. The PGA Tour, one of the execs there said something I love. They said it used to be back in the day, you know, they had swing coaches. And now golfers, and then they had like staff um, strength coaches, right? And now they have stats coaches, right? So they've sort of added their, their coaching yeah. base, whatever. But these players are much more comfortable with data, and they want to understand the data and how it can help them from a performance perspective. And so all of these analytics help them. Yes, it might be a minor modification in terms of you're favoring your right foot instead of your left. Let's build up strength in your left. Um, so it, it's you you have like sort of everybody much more comfortable with using data. And, and players across all sports properties are sort of leaning in and asking for more. Yeah, well, you know, it's, it's been great to see, and I just think, uh, you know, keep it up. So everything from, <laughs> you know, F1, NHL, NBA, uh, the production quality of all those sports has gone up, and Frank, the fan experience had, and that's really a win for everybody. And so, uh, I, and the other impact I think you've had too is being able to attract uh, non-fans and casual fans to make them hardcore fans. And I think you and I talked about this last time we talked where what AI does is it lets, it democratizes expertise. Yeah. And so a casual fan now can become, have the same kind of insights as a hardcore fan because you're telling them what to look for. Yeah. Like in the NFL broadcast. I love that, the defensive alerts, the, the defense, right? Right. I love that. Like if you're a, you know, if you're a former football coach, you're going to see the guy coming up. But as an average fan, you might have no idea what that player is doing, right? Right. So, yeah. so if we can signal, hey, look for this. You know, these guys are likely to blitz. All yeah. of a sudden, your eyes are too. And, and then when that happens, you feel smarter as a fan, yeah. right? Like, oh, I knew that was going to happen. Yeah, well, we just showed you it was going to happen. But we previewed yeah, that. Yeah. It was a predictive model that helped to, you know, inform. But I do think when fans feel smarter about what they're watching, they will watch more of it. They yes. will become a more invested fan. So, yeah, well, that drives up revenue, and that's good for everybody. It so, is. Yeah, so, all right. Awesome. Uh, anything else you want to add? No, it was Thank you. Yeah, this we talked a lot of AI, you. and uh, uh, really excited about the game tomorrow. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I guess uh, next year at this time, I'll be expecting... Uh, oh, more stories. Yeah, bigger things. Let's so, go. Yeah, so, all right. So, from Seahawks House in Berlin, uh, I'm with Julie Souza from AWS. Uh, thanks for watching. Give us a like and hit that subscribe button. I'll see you next time on the next episode of Zcast.